All right, so here we go, lab number seven, where we are going to talk a little bit about uh, some, uh, some pretty cool monitor bus workflow stuff, and then we're going to delve into the dicey topic of comms buses, how to best create comms and com communication buses with people around you. I'm going to mute a few people up here. If you're not, please mute your mics. A few more people in. Okay, so um, I'll just I'll ask for a little grace ahead of time. I've got so much built into this show file to be able to show this today. If I get this all right <laughs> without messing this up, it's going to be a, a miracle. But we'll, we'll, I'll give it the old college try here. All right, so all of that said, am I ready here? Am I, am I recording everything I'm supposed to be recording? I think I am. Uh, we'll get the cameras on when we need them. Let's see here. Hang on one second. I think I got to do one more thing here. Stand by for me. Check, check, check. There we go. All right. So let's just get right to it. I'll have to keep on adding some people to the room here. I might get interrupted every now and then. Just hang in there with me. All right, so we are going to talk about some monitor mixing navigation today. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff on digital consoles now to be able to help you do this. Uh, I'll be showing you, you know, from the S6L vantage point, obviously, but uh, we can, uh, you know, a lot of these things apply to other consoles uh, for sure because a lot of them have these similar workflows, but we can talk about it all day long if we want. Let's just get right to it. So the first thing we're going to discuss here is a sends on faders workflow. Okay, so let me get my cameras on here and let's get ready to at least show something. Okay, so SOF workflow is uh, an acronym for sends on faders, right? So that allows us to get uh, auxiliaries actually down on the faders so we can mix a little quicker, uh, mix a little more, uh, you know, fluently than trying to turn knobs and, and mix and set levels on that. It's, it's not that you can't do it on the knobs. It's just a little more intuitive on the faders, right? So uh, the way we normally do that is just engage the sends on faders mode on the console, and once we do that, if we attention an auxiliary on the SXL, then you'll see those faders come up on the actual faders on the console, right? So all of the input faders would be available to you, obviously, and then you would go up and turn those up in the given aux. So let me get a camera here. Let's see, let's go to this guy. So if we're just taking a look here, if I go to sends on faders mode and I go to an aux, uh, let me just pick any old aux here. Uh, I'll, I'll pick my drum drive. All right. So now what you see, oops, I got to get out of sends here. So what you see here across the board are uh, actual levels for things that are in this particular aux, right? Uh, so uh, let's see if I got that right here. Yeah. So these are uh, actual faders that are in the aux, and if I want to turn up those faders in the given aux, I've actually got to go up to the, uh, to the auxiliaries and do that, right? So if I were going to turn up this particular keyboard in the aux, there I would have the ability to do it. I can turn those up in that aux. Uh, this is the actual send level uh, within that. Let's take a look here. That doesn't look right to me. I'm going to get out of this for a second. Let's try this one more time. It doesn't look right. Oh, because I'm in layouts. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Let's try again. Let's just uh, start over here again. So I'm going to go to sends on faders mode, and I'm going to go to an aux. That is my drum drive. There we go. That's looking more normal. So what happened was there I was in layouts as opposed to being in inputs. So these are the send levels within that given aux. This is a, an aux that I have called drum drive, uh, which is the way I do my parallel uh, 
cats. And so you can see the kicks, the snares, the tom-toms are the things going to the parallel compression, a snare two down here, uh, et cetera. So it's just a really easy way to create a blend in an aux on the faders, right? If I go to another one, maybe I go to MC drive, uh, you would see that there's only a few faders in that particular drive. There's not a whole lot of stuff in that. that and again, that's a parallel drive, okay? So it's a really handy thing to have, uh, really easy to put down. Now, obviously, in the situation that you see, uh, even here on the console, I've got to, once I go into sends on faders mode and I take a look at a given aux, let's pick another one here. Now I've got all of the f input faders in their order, right? And to get to things within an aux, I've actually got to navigate all of the input layers there, right? Because all channels are going to be accessible to this auxiliary. So I've just got to go find the ones I want to turn on and turn up in that auxiliary, right? Okay, so nice and handy move there. Now, one of the cool things you can have uh, in monitor workflows for sure, we do this on S6L, is that you can have uh, AFL follow sends on faders, right? And the idea behind that is that if I have uh, sends on faders engaged and I go and listen to a mix, I go AFL a mix, usually that's an indication that I'm going to want to work or adjust or edit on that mix. So if we tie those two actions together now, you can be assured that whatever I AFL, that will be the mix that comes up on the faders in front of me, right? So let's go do that for a second. Let me see if I've got it turned on in this show file. Stand by. I'll do it here. Sends on faders, follows AFL. Voila, I sure do. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, just AFL a mix now, and when I do that, it should automatically bring it up and send on faders, and sure enough. So right now, if we had the control room up and we had music playing, I would be listening uh, to this auxiliary and mixing right to it, okay? Uh, We're not seeing your camera, Robert. Yeah, sorry, I just put it up there. Let me do it again. So I'll just solo up another mix. Thank you, Fred. Uh, so solo up another mix, and now that mix is up and I am actually mixing to it. If I solo another mix, obviously it comes up, and the mix that I'm listening to is actually the one that I'm adjusting in the auxiliaries, right? Make my adjustment. I need to here. Okay, so really handy feature, and you can also flip it around on S6L where you can say uh, AFL follows sends on faders now. So even if I don't have solo engaged, as soon as I AFL a mix, it will automatically solo it as well. All right, so it's just that kind of way of keeping your head in the game and make sh making sure you don't make, which is really the cardinal sin in digital consoles, right, of thinking you're listening to a mix that you're not seeing, right? If, if I'm listening to a mix, but that's not the mix that's in front of me and I start making adjustments, uh-oh, all bets are off. You know, I've just made a, a lot of adjustments on a mix that I'm not listening to. Did I mean to do that? Boy, I sure hope you did, because that's a job loser right there when you do that. Okay, um, get some more people in here. Here they come. Welcome, folks. Okay, so, um, yeah, please mute your mics when you come in. If you haven't, please, please, please. All right, so the uh, way sends on fader work uh, follows AFL, as you kind of saw, works. We turn it on. We turn that functionality on, and we engage solo mode. And now any auxiliary, uh, auxiliary that we solo is going to come up in sends on faders mode. It's going to be a very connected workflow there. Right? So soloing an aux automatically engages it into sends on faders. And then the vice versa is true as well. Uh, we can turn the other way on. We can have them both on, as a matter of fact, if we want to do that. Now, if we have sends on fader mode uh, addressed, anything that we bring into sends on fader will automatically solo it at the same time as well. So it's just a really kind of a safety net uh, for monitor guys to be able to make sure that the mix you are working on is the mix you're listening to, okay?
All right, sends on fader mode with VCA trim. Now this is a really interesting one here, and there's a, there is just so many applications for this. Uh, so it, it's really cool. I, this is one I, I, when we first put it in the consoles, I really thought it was more geared toward monitor guys, you know, that monitor guys would get a lot of good out of it. But I've actually had great success using it uh, in front of house workflows as well. And it actually works in terms of front of house and monitor workflows combined, right? If you're doing front of house and monitors, uh, it can actually work really well there as well. So the idea here is that if I have a set of inputs uh, that I assign a VCA to, okay, obviously it's going to be a remote control for those faders, right, uh, that are probably going to the left right bus, you know, the master faders, the input faders at that point. But if I go to sends on faders, that v and I have those inputs up in the auxiliary, that VCA now becomes a trim for those levels in the auxiliary, right? So it's like you're getting dual use out of a VCA there if you want to do it. In, in terms of just a pure monitor workflow, if I have that VCA assigned to my drums per se, right? And I have drums turned up in aux one, aux two, aux three, aux four, aux five. Every time I go to sends on faders on one of those auxes, that VCA is going to be there to trim those levels within that aux now. So it's like you have a have an instant little submaster for those faders because here's kind of the thing. Let me uh, go here, actually. So here's what you need to recognize with why this would be important to be able to do. And it's, you know, it's easy to gloss over this. So let me go to sends on faders here on an aux. Let's do this one again. Actually, let me get something that's got some blends in it. Let's go here. So I'm just going to build a blend of things. Let's, let's say that was the aux mix, right? That was what was in that auxiliary. And somebody, if you didn't have the VCA attached to it, so the artist would say to you, hey, just turn all of that up for a second. Will you just turn all of that up in my mix? Well, if we understand logarithmic behavior of a fader throw, right, we know that this, once I do this, that's no longer the same blend now, right? Because I've made higher decibel changes on some than others, right? I, I, I've actually changed the balances once I just grab the faders and all turned them up, even by the same amount of distance, it doesn't uh, give us the same amount of change in audio, and we have a different blend going now, right? So the idea with VCA is if I have a VCA attached to that, and let's, let's just, for the sake of this argument, and then I'm actually going to show this to you, let's say this is the VCA in charge of this. Well, now if I just turn this up 1 dB, all of this has just gone up 1 dB, right? So this works in VCA mode uh, like this works as a trim now. It doesn't work as an absolute level for the auxiliaries. It works as a trim, all right? If we, were had, if we have this VCA and we're using it on the main input layer, then it is an absolute level, right? It would, if I had the fader here, these would be sitting down. We would, we would actually see the absolute level, all right? So on the main faders, it's going to work as an absolute level. For any of those faders that are in the auxiliaries, that VCA is going to work as a trim to the auxiliary now. Okay, so let me see if I can get this up where you can see it. Uh, what I got to do is go to sends on faders for, actually I got to do this first. Let's go get this. All right, I think that's right. And then we want to send on fader on this guy, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see. Are we on the right thing here? Can you see this? You can't. I need to go here. All right, so I know these faders are a little dark down here. I'm hoping you can kind of see these down here. Uh, so as it sits right now, I've got a VCA on my main input layer that is assigned to kick, snare, and toms, and a snare 2 down here, all right? And that's this VCA. So obviously, uh, if I move that, it would change the input fader level, right? So let me, uh, let me go here to prove that to you. Stand by, please.
All right, so on the left-hand side of the screen, let me give you a little picture-in-picture picture here if I can. Stand by for me. Okay, so uh, this is that VCA that is assigned to those drum inputs. You're going to look toward the lower left down there for the ones in green. And obviously we're on the main input layer now, right? These are main input faders. And as I turn down this VCA, you can see those faders come down. That's their virtual level, right? Everybody with me so far there? But this VCA can also be used to trim to the bus. All right, so once I go to sends on faders for my bus... Now notice, uh, let's see if I can show it here. Uh, I'm going to have to go here to do that, I think. Let's just do this for now. Okay, so here is my faders. Uh, let me get back out of this and show it. So here's our regular input level, our layer, our regular input faders. And if I go to sends on faders and I dump that aux down, now this VCA is controlling these in the auxiliary, right? So as I turn them down, you can see it actually moves the faders there now, right? So this VCA is actually changing your aux blends there your aux mix levels for those drums it's only and it's only changing it in the aux that we have sends on faders on now keep in mind this is a trim this is not an absolute level right if i come back out of this and i make this trim change i'm going to make a, a big change here just to see just to show you that it doesn't do it so down i'm down minus 20 on the absolute level remember this is on input faders now now when i go to trim the aux Notice it jumps back, oops, sorry, jumps back to zero. It's going to jump back to the unity spot because it knows that we're just trimming now. And then if I trim a little bit, maybe I take down a little bit there, and then I come back out of this and come back again, it's going to go back to zero there because it's a trim, right? You're just adding or subtracting trim to your auxiliary there. Okay. It's really cool, really, really handy stuff uh, to be able to do this. And obviously that happens on any auxiliary. So if you're a monitor guy and you had your drum kit on one VCA when, and you have that drum kit up in multiple auxes, every time you go to sends on faders in one of those auxes, you're going to have a master control for the drum kit in that auxiliary now, a master level control, right? Okay, so again, really, really handy. And, you know, the beautiful part about it, especially on something like SXL, is you have 48 VCAs available to you, right? Regardless of what size console you're on, you have 48 VCAs available to do that kind of stuff. Even if you wanted to break it up a little bit and say, uh, you know, I, I want a separate VCA for my fader layers, and you guys that are doing uh, front of house plus monitors, you might want to do this, although it's not necessary. You might say, well, I want a VCA that's going to be handling my input faders, and then another VCA that is going to handle... Uh, my trims. You could certainly do that if you needed to do it. So, all right. Yeah, there's been, uh, you guys are mentioning a couple of things. Uh, yeah, there's been a few companies that do this actually. Digico, I, I didn't, actually didn't know Digico was doing it, but I'm glad they are. Uh, Minus does it. I know, I think Soundcraft was probably the first company that I saw that offered this, where they offered a set of VCAs available to every aux like that. So, yeah, really, really handy workflow. All right, let's get back to this, and we'll carry on here. So obviously the VCA is actually trimming the aux level. That's the thing to take note of here. All right, now here's the other cool thing that comes with this kind of workflow, and it is a combination of sends on fader and spill. So if we go back to the camera room for a second, you noticed earlier when I... Uh, you sends on faders for an auxiliary, 
remember, like I said, this is this is the inputs in order here, right? And you would have to actually navigate down to find all the inputs that you want to turn on and get going in that auxiliary. But once you have that done, uh, if you combine that with, uh, with spill, now I do sends on faders plus spill, check out what happens, right? So if I go to sends on faders and spill now, and I touch on that auxiliary, only the faders that are actually on in that auxiliary come up. Regardless of where they are in the input layers, they might be spread across five, six, seven, eight different layers, but only the channels that are on in the auxiliary come up right in front of you. So it's like a, it's like a filter mechanism. You know, it just recollates those inputs right in front of you there. So let's, let's do another one, kind of show it here. So here's another one that's only got, you know, five inputs on it. This is, yeah, this is some vocal stuff, right? So you don't have to navigate through all those input layers to find those particular, uh, those particular uh, inputs that you want to work on. Really, really great. I love aux spill. I use it all the time. Okay, so uh, we just got to attention the aux, and we're going to be in spill mode. And, of course, we can spill it, and it will come up uh, right on the console. If we combine that with uh, sends on faders, then we get the combined workflow spill plus sends on faders and engage it. And now all of that is recollated right in front of you. Those, those faders to the left there don't necessarily have to be in that order. It's just going to recollate the uh, channels that are on in the aux up to the top layer. And of course, that works with the AFL uh, feature as well. If you were if you were in sends on faders plus spill and you solo something, only the channels that are on in that soloed aux are going to come to the top layer there. Again, it, for monitor mixing, it just makes it so so fast. Okay, so monitor mix navigation. Just a couple of highlights here, and then we'll move on to the next part. Uh, in SXL, in particular, the universe view. Uh, gives you instant vis visibility up to 96 auxes right in front of you. You, would, you could solo, spill, sends on faders, any one of 96 auxes without having to ever navigate anywhere to do it. It's all sitting right in front of you in the, in the universe view there. Uh, I'll just let you kind of read through it there. Uh, there's actually one typo in this. Uh, where it says VCA trims while in SOF provides up to 32 VCAs. That's now 48 VCAs. Uh, so we've updated that a little bit. All right. All right. Hold on to your socks. Here we go. See if I can make it through this. Mm. All right. So let's talk about combining MON and COM buses. And by COM buses, I mean communication channels, right? So if you have uh, people that are on stage. Oh, sorry. One second, guys. Uh, if you have people that are on stage that need to speak to you or production people, etc., you know, the monitor console always ends up being kind of the hub of that uh, and gets distributed from there. It's even, uh, even more important, really, when everybody is on ear mixes, because you might have people on stage uh, that don't have vocal microphones, and for musicians to talk to other musicians, etc., it just becomes, I mean, you become like that operator on the you know, in the old 50s movies, right, where you're just constantly patching in people, you know, Mr. Jones, line seven, okay, we'll move, put you over there, right? So uh, so hopefully I'm going to give you some ways to help, help you manage that or give you some ideas to maybe uh, work this into your own workflow uh, and, and actually help you out. It's not quite as hard as people, I think, are making this uh, out in the world, believe it or not. So here we go. Let's just talk about a very basic comms concept here. Uh, where we and in this situation, we're just going to create four communication mics. These could be microphones from road guys on stage, from the production office, whatever. These could be four band members that might need to talk to other band members. It's just four communication mics. We're just going to keep it nice and simple here at first. And then, of course, uh, we're going to have as a monitor guy, we're going to usually choose a mix that is our prime mix, right? It's maybe the lead singer's mix, typically. The stars mix, and that is the one we need to focus on all the time, right? That is the one I kind of need to hear in my ears or my wedges 
all the time. That's the one I'm going to be using the most, right? And a lot of times we ha a lot, what I see a lot of guys do is, you know, just take, uh, like we can put our communication or our control room bus up into a matrix now, uh, you know, so that guys can, can hear it and add it with comm mics, which we'll talk about here. But the challenge becomes, you know, that guys have presented to me is like, well, you know, that mix to monitors bus in the comm doesn't really do anything. It just lets me hear the left right bus. I can't really hear anything that I want to hear uh, in, in terms of that stars mix. And I, I have to keep it soloed all the time. And of course, uh, there are, usually the guys that say this really don't understand the, the concept of that mix to mon bus, which is mix to monitors, right? And it's mix to control room, actually. So in a, in a normal left-right situation, in a normal left-right situation where I'm mixing left-right, and I have, let's do this. Hang on, I'm going to adjust the camera here for just a second. This area up here is my control room output, right? This is where I can hear solos, I can do whatever I want, and I have a mix to monitors button. Yeah, And if I press that mix to monitors button, what is going to happen is the left-right mix is going to go to my headphones uh, at all times until I solo something. Right? As soon as I solo something, I only hear the solo. I come out of solo, and it, it's the left-right mix again uh, for my headphones. Well, this, this is actually super powerful for monitor guys, right? So if we were to take a left-right uh, or an auxiliary and actually assign it to the left-right bus, that auxiliary now will be in our control room mix all the time until we solo something, right? As long as we're not using the left-right bus for anything else, we can get away with doing this. So in this situation, we would take the four comms mics and the prime aux mix and assign it to the left-right master. An auxiliary master is going to get assigned to the left-right master. And once we do that, then that auxiliary master is going to show up in mix to mons, right? So if I'm a monitor guy now and I just throw on my headphones and I have mix to mon on, I'm listening to the stars mix until I solo something. And guess what else I'm listening to? I'm listening to those four comm mics as well. Now they're blended together there. You know, they could all be happening at the same time here, but those comms mics come in on that mix to monitors button as well now, right? So it's a, this is just a really, really easy to, way to facilitate that right out of the get-go, you know. I usually, I, honestly, I usually do this uh, when I'm in a rehearsal situation, like maybe if I'm in uh, like a mini control room or whatever, where I'm prepping in virtual sound check, whatever, I'll almost always have the, the comm guys assigned to the left, right, so that they can talk to me and ask me stuff while that's going on regardless. Now, would I ever do that during the show? Of course not. Of course not, because it's going to come out of the PA system. But in you know, a rehearsal situation, that can be a really handy way to do it. Now, the monitor guy, on the other hand, he wants to be able to put these uh, comm mics anywhere and everywhere on stage at a moment's notice, right? But he also may need to hear from them while he's mixing his show. And this provides a, a really easy method to do that, okay? Now, we can also, as we just kind of learned, we can also take a VCA and assign it to those comm mics, right? And once we do that, then we have a lot of options at our disposal, right? We can obviously control the level of all of those microphones to the mix to monitors button with that VCA. But also, if we go into our spill modes, if we go into sends on faders now, now that VCA is trimming the communications up into the aux that is in sends on faders, right? And if we have it set up in pre-fade, whatever, you know, we would just zero that VCA out, bring it back up, and all of those comm mics would now be live in the aux that we have sends on faders initiated on. Okay, sorry, I let somebody in here. There we go. Okay, you got to kind of get in that. It's really, really effective way to do it here. Now remember, this is in the context of mixing monitors, right? <clears throat> in, event, in addition, on SXL we have events where we can actually choose which mix gets assigned to that mix to monitors button just with recalls of uh, you know snapshot or event that would reassign a different aux to that mix to monitors button and it really all it's doing is just changing the aux master assignment to the left right bus because remember 
whatever is assigned to the left right bus is going to show up in that mix to mons button right so you could just do a an event driven snapshot change and say well okay right now i'm going to work with just the drummer so let me have the drummer's mix in my earphones so i can solo in and out of it solo inputs and then come right back and work on his mix with him maybe i'll put up his comm mics in there so we can work together so it just makes a makes for a really easy way to do that fred you got your hand up man go for it Oh, sorry, I was uh, back on the other thing, uh, BCAs. Yeah. Uh, does the SXL not have aux master volumes? No, it does have an aux master, yeah. Okay, so, so, so that BCA trend that you're talking about is the same thing as an aux master in no. that particular scenario? No, it is not, because if I turn down an aux master, that is just essentially a master volume for where those faders are sitting. Right? That's just a master volume for that output. If I have a VCA assigned to inputs within that aux master, oh, not all, of, not all of the inputs. Okay, I right, got you. right. That's yeah, the, I, I can break up. I can have four, five, six, eight, ten different VCAs controlling different families within that aux there. Right. Sorry, I was confused because when you when you took your fi your fingers and you moved them all up and down, I assumed those were all of the things in the aux mix, and so I saw that as the same as an aux master. But I understand what you're saying. Now. Yeah, not exactly the same. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, carry on here. I, I'm actually going to make an attempt to show you this in action today. It may just completely blow up in front of me, but I'm going to give it a shot here. So stand by one second here. All right, so let's try doing just this example here. Give me just a second to get my head together and make sure I got this all right here. So that needs to be here, I think. And... Actually, no, I think it needs to be this. All right, just bear with me a second. I'm going to do a little test here. Okay, stand by. So I'm going to give you a little camera action here. Go back to this guy. Hang in there with me, fellow lab rats. All right, so we that. Okay, so uh, just to kind of prove my point here, I, we're just going to do a very simple example of it here. So I've got some music coming here, and this is mixed to monitor. So we're listening to the control room output now. We're listening to this output go to the stream right now, okay? So if I turn that off, obviously there's no left-right mix going to the stream because mixed to mons is off, okay? Now I'm going to turn on some comm mics here that I've got pre-recorded. Com one, com two, com three, com four. So this is just a combination of those microphones and the mix that is going to the left-right bus. Com one, i.e., mix com to monitors. Two, com three, com four. Com one, com two, com three. Okay. So the important thing that, that you would kind of pick up on there, I hope you note there, is that everything's just being blended together there, right? There's no dynamics in play here. I haven't got any kind of ducking in play here. Uh, also should be noted that if I go and put it in play with these things going on, come one, come. and I solo an input, so I've actually soloed a rack tom there, I lose my communications. Obviously, I lose my mix because I've... You know, I'm in solo now, but if somebody was trying to get me on communications right now, they wouldn't be able to get it because I'm working on the on the rack tom, right? So that's kind of the, the caveat that comes with this particular style of the workflow. Once I come out of solo, com three, com four, now all the com mics are back. Com one, com two, com three. Is that making sense to everybody there? So that's this guy. That's this guy. 
All right, so let me see if I can carry on. I passed my first test. All right, so if we wanted to make it uh, where we hear those comm mics all the time, regardless of whether I'm in solo or not, right, then we want to use a matrix to do that. In this situation, we're going to use a matrix to do that. So in this situation, uh, I'm going to take those comm mics directly up into the, the matrix here. I'm not going to assign them to the left, right. I'm going to take them directly up into a matrix. And then I'm also going to add the control room output there, that, that monitor output there. Okay. Now, mixed them on is still in play here. If I have mixed them on selected, it's still going to provide the mix into this matrix now, right? Because this is the control room output that's coming up there. So right now we're blending together the control room output and the four comm mics into a matrix. And then we're going to take that matrix output and drive it into our, our local ears or our local wedges, right? So at that point, you have both of those things together. Obviously, here I could solo in that control room and not disconnect the comm mics, right? Everybody got that? So that, that's the easier fix. That's the easiest of all the fixes in terms of being able to hear your monitor uh, and or your monitors and your comm mics, right? Now you can obviously duplicate this up into, uh, we have the possibility in S6L to use two comms outputs, right? Or two com uh, control room outputs. We have a control room A, a control room B. You could just build two matrices for that, add both comm mics to both. And whether you're on ears or you're listening to wedges, the communication mics would be there regardless, right? Uh, of course, you could always take and have a pair of speakers on your desk that are dedicated completely to comms if you wanted to do that, where you only hear them through there. But that I, I think that's been more problematic uh, now that we're on ear monitors a lot, where guys are have their you know, full, fully closed off ear monitors working on things. So even if you've got speakers sitting out here that got your comms in it, you may not hear it, right? So you, know, you really want to get them in your ears uh, if you can do it. Let's see, what else have we got here? Uh, yeah, okay, so this is going to be more of an advanced version of this. Uh, what we're going to try to create now is uh, a control room output that is ducked via the comms mics, right? So that we could, regardless of whether we're in solo or we're listening to mixed to monitors, if I'm listening to either one of those and someone speaks, it's actually going to automatically turn down the solo environment by however much we dictate so that we can hear the person talking. When they stop talking, then the solo environment comes back up. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. And this gets a little tricky, but once you get it set, it's really pretty easy to manage. Okay. So we're going to have our comms mics. We're going to have our comm matrix. And we're also going to have our prime aux master. Right? Except for in this situation, we're not going to assign those to the left, right. <clears throat> we're going to take uh, outputs from, like a direct output from that comm matrix return or that comm matrix output, output, excuse me. And then we're going to return it to a channel. So we're going to create a comms mics return. Now you'll see why here in a second. We're going to do the same thing with the auxiliary master. So if this is our prime aux master, we're going to create a send and return it to a channel as well. You'd have to return this in stereo uh, in that situation, all right? So we've got a comm return and an aux uh, to mix to monitors return. Once we have that, then we're going to take and assign those to the mix to monitors bus. We're going to assign those to the left right master. The aux return is going to get assigned to the left right, not the prime aux master. Also, once we do that, then we can put a ducker on that aux uh, to mix to, mix to monitors return. We can put a ducker on there, and we're going to key that ducker from the comm return, right? So it's a blend of all those microphones that are going to go into the key input of that ducker, right? And then once we have that, anytime we have whatever mix we have going uh, that is set up as our prime aux master, we're going to be listening to that mix. And then as soon as somebody speaks, it's going to turn down that mix just for me so I can hear the communication, right? And that's why we need to do the return there. If we just put the ducker across the aux master, it would duck it for the artist as well, which was, is not what we would want to do, right? We only want to duck it for us. All right, so, uh, and then again, through snapshot change or whatever, if we wanted to make a different aux as our prime aux master, we could just do that with snapshot change, just very simple snapshot change of, of the patch uh, within that return, okay?
Same thing applies with the VCA to the matrices here. Uh, we could have that VCA and be able to do that up into any uh, aux that we send on faders here. All of that still applies here. Okay. So let's uh, let me try to get that one set up here, and we'll see if we can do that. So I think for that, I've got to be here. I think I got to be here. And I think. All right, let me test this real quick to see if this is right. So this should sound really weird because I've just thrown up a really weird monitor mix for this. I knew it was too good to be true. This guy. One, com two. Com Not stand by for me. I'm going to try this. I'm not totally convinced this is right yet. But. Come one. No, sorry. My bad. One second, please. I've got a double bus going on here somewhere. There it is. Two, com three. Not quite yet. <laughs> I've got too many things going on in this show file. What's going on up there? Yes. Sorry, fellas, please hang in there with me. Com two, com three, com four. Com one, com two, com three, com four. Com two, com three, com four. Com one, com two, com three, com four. That's 
So I'm just going to solo up a couple inputs here. Three, seven, com four. All right, and I can tell you, I'm not hearing the comms there because I don't have them turned up in that uh, that matrix that is coming out to you. Maybe I can get that done here real quick. Didn't quite get this done. Yeah, so stand by for me for one more second if you can. It'll be worth it. All right, let's see if I'm any better here. Com one, com two, com three, com four. All right, so I just have an input soloed now. Com one, and as you can see, com I can two, still hear com three com mics. Com four. Right, and if I come out, then I'm listening to my prime mix. Com one, com two, com three, com four. After all that, finally got it happening there. So I'm going to uh, do a question here from Eric. Uh, so mixed to mon is like a custom. Any mix we can assign to here instead of... Now, this is not instead of normal AFL. This is just the mix that is going to be in your earphones or in your headphones whenever nothing is soloed, right? That's all that mixed to mon is dictating there. So uh, you can still solo. Like if, you, if I have that stars mix uh, set up in mixed to mon, in, on the mixed to mon button, I can still go solo any other artist mix that I want to solo, but as soon as I clear solos, I'm going to hear the stars mix or whatever mix you've chosen to be on that mixed and mon button. Is that, is that clear for you there, Eric? I hope I say your name right there. Yeah, good. Okay, yeah, so it's not in lieu of that. It's just a, a way to, to make sure that you're always hearing uh, a given mix uh, in your solo bus there. Scott Taylor, you got a question there. Go. Hey, Robert. Um, so given the question that he just asked, what's the difference between doing that versus like what I was doing the other day where I've set up my star mix to be on the main input faders to come through my left-right bus, so I'm constantly hearing them, and then when I solo somebody, then I go to their aux or, you know, their mix. Mm -hmm. you, you could absolutely do it that way. Absolutely. To me, that seems easier than doing this, though, because I guess my, that's my point. The, the only thing it avoids there is it doesn't give you the possibility for that for mix to monitors to ever be any other mix, right? And the other problem that you have by doing that is as soon as, well, if you're going to use the, well, if you're going to use input faders for your comms that are assigned to the left, right, they're always going to be going to the star mix then, right? Well, the way I've got it set up is the exact same way. I've got all my matrix, like the other day I was telling you, I've, I've done the whole matrix thing, so mm -hmm. I hear everybody at the same time. So when I was testing this out at the shop the other day, everything comes through while I'm listening to my stars mix. I can adjust everything through that and it's fine. And then you, if I solo an, another aux, then you could I'm a, absolutely do that. I'm not, I'm not saying that doesn't work. That absolutely works. Uh, the only flexibility you lose there is the ability to make a different mix, the left, right mix. Yeah. A different mix, the mix to mon. That's the only 
difference there. Right. So yeah, right. if you want to if you want to kind of commit that idea to using your uh, main left right for your star mix, go for it. Yeah, not a problem. It's well, just flexibility, you. you know. But yeah, it definitely works. And and in that situation, you would still let's see, would you do that? Yeah, you would lose the ability to create ducking at that point unless you did. No, you would lose the ability to create ducking there. Is that right? Why would you lose the ability to do ducking if you if I'm doing it the same way? I do my this whole pattern that you've got on the screen currently. That would be for my matrix and for my comms. How are you gonna? How are you gonna? How are you gonna duck your matrix? I mean, I'm sorry. Let me. Forget, I I said it wrong. How are you gonna duck your control room output then? You mean my stars mix that I'm listening to currently? Mm-hmm. Well, your control room mix in total. That's the, that's the goal of this thing that you see on the screen, is to be able to duck the control room mix when someone is speaking in comms. So the way I'm talking about doing it, you can't do this ducker thing. Right, right. Because so, you have no way of getting to the, you have no way of making the control room mix, you have no way to separate it out where you can insert something on it. Because as soon as you return it, and assign it to the left, right, it's in your stars mix, in your setup. Okay. Yeah. Good point. I mean, as many, I, it's, I, and I, I, I'm not really in any way trying to tell guys how to work. I'm just saying, man, we have tons of boxes now. Uh, that, you know, come up with a good reason to be on the left, right bus uh, to do your stars mix other than just having faders up in front of you. You know, it's, it's actually, in some ways, it's actually easier to do the stars mix in the auxes because then sends on fader workflows and spills work for that mix as well. In your stars mix that's just working off the left right bus now, you could work in layouts, that's a big advantage of it for sure, but you would still have to navigate, do a lot of navigation to turn things up and down there, right? That would that would really require that you work in kind of a layout workflow or, you know, even using groups, all kinds of stuff there, right? So there's pluses and minus to it, for sure. It's, it's definitely pick your trade-offs. Let's see, what else? Well, that's a beefy topic. I think, yeah, this is all just kind of what we went through here. So let's just get to the highlights, and we'll have a nice easy day in the lab here. Uh, as You know, kind of using that input sources for your comms mic, obviously you can use as many as you've got input channels for. So that works out great. Uh, I'll just leave those up there. You guys can kind of read through them. The VCA trim thing works really good in that situation. Uh, if you want to be able to trim comm mics and send comm mics up to an aux very, very quickly. The harder one, I think, is, you know, getting, like, although I guess you could just have it pre-done, you know, have auxes uh, that contain all the audience mics. Like if you had, or not audience mics, good grief, what am I saying? All the comms mics uh, in all of your auxes and be able to turn on communication at the drop of a hat. You know, in that situation, you might want to break up specific comm mics into different VCAs. Maybe you got your road guys as one, you know, comm group, your band members that don't have vocal mics as another comm group, uh, you know, where they're just going to talk into, com, uh, into comms to be able to talk to the other artists, et cetera. So, like I said, you end up being that phone operator at that point. Boy, you're just routing communications everywhere. So. I'm open to ideas. Anybody's got quick fixes for that, man, share them, on the, share them here with me, please. All right. In terms of just, you know, changing mixes that are going to the mix to mon button, you can do that with uh, momentary snapshot recall. Uh, I could probably actually show you that here, too, if you want to see it. Uh, let's see here. Let's, I'm going to mute the comm mics for a second. So this is the prime mix.
All right, so there we go. So that's just changing. I'm just using a momentary snapshot there uh, to change what is going to the Mix to Mons button. So again, I, I'm not suggesting to use that instead of solo. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying if you want would ever want other mixes to go to that Mix Them On button, it's very easy to do it where you can have it kind of preset, uh, especially for rehearsals, things like that. I, I doubt that I would ever even have that turned on for a show that, that I was doing unless I was really confident about what I was doing there. But to be able to make different buses that are going to duck off of that Calm and that Mix Them On button, very easy to do with events and snapshots. Okay. Any other questions there? Kind of let your... Let it all kind of sink in. Scott, how did your week go messing with all that stuff? Did you, and did, did it fry your brain or did you have, uh, did you have fun? Oh, I had fun. I, I set up a, I went and got a couple speakers and set up an actual wedge mix. And then I set up my Q, you know, wedge mix with my ears and, yeah. I just put on music through my Spotify and started routing that music different places and everything. And it just, I, w I was up to the shop at like <laughs> 7 o'clock. I was up all day. I love it. I love it was it. great. And I'm, I'm enjoying this console, believe it or not. It's once you wrap your head around it, it's, I, I feel like I could actually do something on it now. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, that's a success story for sure. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's probably true of any console. You know, once, I mean, they're all so different now in terms of, you know, their kind of their macro capabilities. Once you get your head around all the all the really cool, juicy stuff on it, you know, the consoles can be really fun. And there's a lot of a lot of capability on this console. You know, in terms of what you can do with things like this, so a lot of fun. I know, you know, uh, right now we're, you know, we're in the process of working on group to group workflows. You know, to be able to do more, you know, grouping up into auxes. Uh, so once we have that, you know, you'll be able to actually do audio subgroups up into auxes, like you can do on some of the other consoles. We just want to make sure we handle the latency right and uh, be able to do some delay compensation for that. I wish my market would support SXL. We are still on the venue SC48. John Ryan, this is what I got to say to you, brother. Hang on, hang on. It's coming, I promise. The downturn kind of put a big dent in our, in our production schedule, but uh, we are working on it, brother. We are trying to get down there to you because we know how important that market is to to SXL for sure. So hang in there. Uh, Going to be some great stuff coming for you. So, who's us too? Evan, who's that? Who's us too? <laughs> us three. <laughs> All right. Oh, your company's in the Maritimes in Canada. Is that right, Canada? Has you got that right? All right, guys. Well, we're just at an hour there. Uh, unless you got anything else you want me to show you there, uh, we'll, we'll kind of knock it on the head. I will put out this kind of feeler for you guys. Next week, we are going to jump into the beefy, and I do mean beefy topic, of redundancy in your systems. What kind of redundancy do you create for your shows in case your digital console goes kablooey? So... I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done in the past. Obviously, the stuff I'll show you will be kind of centered on SXL, but I'm, I'm going to reach out to you guys right now and say, if you've got redundancy schemes that you've used, and I don't care what console it is, Digico, Midas, I don't care, bring them and be able to share them. I don't care, the, care whether it's a picture on a napkin that you've drawn, uh, but be able to share it and discuss it, and let's talk about this idea of redundancy because it is a real thing, and... I get kind of, uh, I won't say angry, but I get disappointed in people when they go out on these shows, even small to mid-sized shows, without a redundancy strategy in place. I mean, and the idea of any redundancy, obviously, right, is that there's no silence in the show. Or if there is a silence, it's really short, and we get back having audio. Because, you know, I'll put this bug in your, in your mind here when you're thinking about how you're going to do this or what you're going to show me. Bad sounding audio is better than silence at a show, period, end of story. So even if the mix is not the best thing coming out of the PA system, you and the promoter will be way better off with, no, with that audio rather than no audio, okay? So redundant schemes, redundancy schemes are really, really important. Now, you can take it too far. 
You can make it where you have so much redundancy built into the system that you actually destabilize the system. So there's always going to be a sweet spot, right? And it's always about keeping the show going. So that's what we're going to spend. I'm going to say we're going to spend at least one lab session on, and I'm betting we end up uh, going through a couple of them there discussing that topic. So get your notes together. Get your drawings together. If you've got show file information, et cetera, that you want to share with the, the people here, by all means do that. But let's talk about redundancy and make sure we can go out on these shows and feel confident that if something goes wrong, we're going to get through the night. Okay? Does that sound cool to everybody? Sounds like a good lab topic to me. All right. On that note, I'm going to let you go. And thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, look for the, uh, the docs, if there's a doc for this, and the recordings to come up soon. Usually I can get the recordings up to YouTube, etc., by tomorrow, early tomorrow sometime. So I hope this, guy, this helped you guys out, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, man. See you guys. Bye-bye.